Hi, welcome to the Audubon Center for Birds of Prey Lunch and Learn program. My name is Nancy. So today's program is a little bit different because I'm going to talk about dinosaurs. Yep, dinosaurs. You heard me right. So you're probably thinking, so what do dinosaurs have to do with birds of prey? And that's what we're going to investigate today. So when we think of dinosaurs, a lot of people think of those really huge animals that roam the earth, scary and enormous. I'm going to show a picture of one here. This is a, a good drawing depicting the big dinosaurs running on their legs through the, the forest. There's another one that you all are probably familiar, the uh, sauropods and the stegosaurus. And that's how we often think of the dinosaurs. But the dinosaurs came in lots of different sizes, lots of different shapes. They had lots of different adaptations. And there were also dinosaurs that would look something like this. And you can clearly see that these dinosaurs are flying dinosaurs. We can't see these animals today, these huge dinosaurs, right? Where they're, they're not living any longer. And so how do these scientists even know about them? Well, scientists, particularly paleontologists, look through fossils to try and find about animals that once roamed the earth. And, and what is a fossil? So a fossil is basically any trace evidence, any evidence of past life, plant or animal, from a long time ago, a past geological age. So fossils could be bones, they could be shells, they could be impressions that the animal left into, stones, uh, any evidence of past life. And I actually have a couple fossils to show you. This one here is plant. You can see I'm holding a stone, and in the stone is an impression of a plant, something like a fern. And so it's a stone with an impression of a fern on one side. So that's, that's considered a fossil. And I also have some really cool looking teeth. And these are shark's teeth. They were actually found uh, on beaches in Florida. These came from an area near Englewood, Florida, but they are evidence of sharks from a long time ago. And you can find these on your own. So it's pretty cool. So that's what scientists are looking for. So you've all probably seen uh, pictures of paleontologists and they go out in the field into rock formations and they take a long time to search for, hunt for uh, fossils and they find them out in the field, they can do some analysis there, and then a lot of times they bring it back the, uh, the fossils back to the laboratory where they can do more, um, more analysis on them. And in recent decades, they've found fossils that really bring in the clues that show the dinosaur and bird connection even, even more clearly. And partly it's because of the identification of uh, feathers on dinosaurs. So what you, if you think about what makes a bird a bird, oftentimes one of the first things we think about is feathers. That's one of their primary characteristics that allows them to fly. And when they found these fossils now that are sort of in between the dinosaur and bird, they look like dinosaurs, but they have bird-like features. They've got feathers. They have a, a bone structure like modern day birds. That's what has, it allows air inside the bones. They have um, feet that look like birds. Some of these have teeth that makes them look more like a dinosaur, and some might have more like a beak, which makes them more like a bird. But it's so it's an interesting connection to show between the dinosaurs and birds. And um, I'm going to show you a picture now of a fossil, and this is a fossil of Archaeopteryx, which is considered one of the really close links between dinosaurs and birds. There's always been some debate whether this actually is the first bird or whether it's still a dinosaur. Uh, because it really does bridge between the two. So let me show you that picture. So on this fossil, you can see it's a little difficult to see the, all the pieces, but if you look closely, you can see his head sort of in the middle facing upward, or his neck kind of arched back. You can see his arms that are actually his wings. That's basically the, the, the arms of the bird are the wings. And then you can see the uh, long legs and also a tail. And then attached to the arms, if you look them reaching out, and for the tail, you can see the impressions of feathers. So this Archaeopteryx finding was uh, really, really important in, in understanding the connection between dinosaurs and birds. 
So this picture here is an artist's drawing of what the archaeopteryx might have looked like. They take the fossil record, they take the information that they know from their science, and then they draw a picture of what they think it looked like. It's a really cool looking animal. And you can definitely see things that look bird-like and perhaps things that look dinosaur-like. So trying to solve the the connections and the mysteries between the connection of birds and dinosaurs, scientists do something that you all probably have done. And that is to look at something, look at two things, and find similarities and differences. You've probably done this with uh, games or maybe in science class. You get two things, you say, what's the same and what's different? And as you analyze the similarities and the differences, you can start to categorize animals into family trees. You just determine which ones are related to another, each other and which ones are not related. And you might do this um, in science and to try to look at the adaptations over time, to try and look at how species evolved into where they are today. And these adaptations and, and changes are, are sometimes really subtle. They happen very slowly. Uh, but over long, long periods of time, the changes can be uh, really dramatic, and that's fun to see. So amongst birds and dinosaurs, the, oh, the things that, dinos that scientists looked at were uh, the bone structure that we've talked about. They had very specific mechanics for flight that were needed. There were extra bones in the, in the wrist, a special bone to allow for the mechanics of flight. The bones had to be light to allow for flight also, like pneumatic bone. The structure of the bones to the core of the body and how the bones were fused changed over time based on how they were needed for flight. The feet are really, really interesting. Bird's feet are fun to look at as well as dinosaur feet in terms of how they evolved and changed and how they were used and what they were used for, how the toes moved or didn't move, as we said. So when you look at all these uh, physical differences, physical similarities. Um, scientists could also look at the DNA of modern animals to help determine the rates of changes over, over time. Um, they, would, they could develop a, a, a family tree, basically, to show the connections between the, the living animals and their past ancestors. This family tree shows the connections between birds, dinosaurs, and even crocodiles, all descending from the same uh, common ancestor. So there's something we still need to talk about. We have birds, which we find that are related to the dinosaurs. They evolved from the dinosaurs. But we don't have the big dinosaurs. And why is that? We don't see a T-Rex when you're walking down your street. We know that they don't exist anymore. But we do have birds. Well, the answer to that has to do with a huge asteroid that hit the Earth about 65 million years ago. That's a really long time. The asteroid hit the Earth and caused massive destruction. First it was too hot, then it was too cold, it was lack of sunlight. Lots of animals, lots of plant life died at this time. Who would die and who would survive? Well, big animals need lots of food to survive. If you're a T-Rex, you're eating lots and lots of food every day. If there's less food, it's really hard for you to survive. And the animals that were huge, like the T-Rex, like the Stegosaurus, like the sauropods, they were the ones that died off. And their specific species became extinct, which means no longer survive. But smaller animals, like the small dinosaur birds of the time, didn't need as much food. They could survive on less food. They also reproduced at higher rates, faster rates. And perhaps the fact that they could fly would have helped them find what little food that there was. So while the big, huge dinosaurs died off, the smaller ones survived, the smaller flying ones, and those are today's birds. So it's a really cool thing to think about if you go in your backyard today and you see a cardinal or a sparrow or a little wren, those are dinosaurs. What a neat thing to think about. So go out in your backyard, look for some birds. We hopefully will, we will see you at the center when we reopen. Great to see you. Thanks so much.